preaching time, go to Acts, the gospel according to the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, 16th chapter, verse 22 through 34 is where we will be taking our message from, Acts, the 16th chapter, verse 22 to 34, you know how we do it. We ask you to stand and honor the word of God. For it's the word that gives us power and gives us life. Acts, the 16th chapter, verse 22 through 34. And it reads as thus. Then the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. And having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in their stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns unto God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed and the keeper of the prison awakened from his sleep and seeing the prison doors open supposing the prisoners had fled drew his sword and was about to kill himself but Paul called with a loud voice saying do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him, and to all were in the house. And he took them in the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set before them, he set food before them, and he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. Today we're going to speak from the topic we want to encourage you on this morning to get your focus back. Get your focus back. Lord you are strength and you are redeemer. From ages past unto now you have been our safe place. You have kept us from danger seen and unseen. Now Lord I ask you to take this word and give it to someone allowed to be planted in somebody's hearts. Lift someone's head, the Lord. Speak to their lives. Allow them to know to not, that they don't have to be distracted by what's going on in their lives. For you are still in control. So, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you, Lord, are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And uh, amen. Get your focus back. There is a fascinating research study done by Vicki Medvick, a professor at Northwestern University. And the study is on Olympic medal, medalists. In, this, in her research, she discovered that bronze medalists were happier than silver medalists. This is so because those who won the silver medal tended to focus on how close they came to winning gold. So they weren't satisfied with silver. However, those who won the bronze medal tend to focus on how close they came to not winning at all. And so they were just happy to be on the stand. And what this study 
reveals so fascinating is the facet of human nature. Your focus determines your reality. How we feel is determined by objective circumstances. Instead, if that was the case, silver medalists would be happier huh, than the bronze medalists because they had objectively better results. But how we feel isn't determined by our objective circumstance. Instead, how we feel is determined by our subjective focus. Another way of putting it is that your internal attitude are more in, is more important than your external circumstance. I'm going to say it again. Your internal attitude is more important than your external circumstance. John Milton said it best, Bishop, the mind is its own place. And in itself, it can make a heaven out of hell or a hell out of heaven. You know, you, as a man sinketh in his heart, so is he. And so we have found this to be true. We all know of people who find something good uh, even in the worst of circumstances. However, we also know of those folks, those Debbie Downers, who can find something bad to focus on even in the best of circumstances. This leads us to the universal principle that we tend to see what we're looking for. We tend to see what we're looking for. Because all of us develop uh, hypotheses and theories about everything all the time. Let me break it down to you. Uh, and, then, and then we look, we look for evidence to support and justify our thoughts and ignore any evidence of the contrary. For example, for example, if you decide that you don't like somebody, then you are apt to always notice everything that is wrong with that person. I don't like her hair. She got too much makeup on and stuff. I don't like the way she walks, who she thinks she is. I don't like the way he stands. Uh, his standing is getting on my nerves. Who he think he is standing that way? He just think he's standing. His standing is offending me. This also works the other way. If you are head over heels, oh yes, Lord, in love with someone, you tend to only notice those things you love about them and overlook any signs of something wrong with them. Some folks think about this, think this way about our current president, where he can do no wrong, and he even knows it. We all see what we are looking for. And so what does this have to do with our message on today? What does this have to do with getting our focus back? Well, I bring this to your attention because we are 23 weeks into this pandemic and not being able to do what we want to do, go where we want to go. Uh, not be having to having to be able to having to shelter in place and be in quarantine, not be able to, being able to physically assemble into the house of God, and as a result, as a result, some of you, some of you have lost your focus. For instead of facing your troubles and trials with your faith, you have fell victim to, through fear and resentment to your own circumstance. And, and, and you see all the bad that's going on. Can't see no good in none of this thing. I'll be glad when this whole thing is over. 
so we can get back to normal. Don't you know by now we ain't going back to normal? Normal ain't coming back. And if you tell the truth and shame the devil, some of that normal wasn't good anyways. There's some normal things that I don't want to go back to. There's some normal racism that I don't want to go back to. There's some normal discrimination that I don't want to go back to. There's some normal police abuse and craziness. There's some normal spiritual wickedness in high places that I don't want to go back to. I need something new in my life. And I'm just wondering if there's anybody out there that's enjoying this virtual experience that can say that I need something new to grasp on. I don't need to go to go back to normal. But the question that I really want to lift up before you on this morning is have you lost your focus? What are you seeing? What are you perceiving? What is your mind showing you? Are you just seeing all good or are you just seeing all bad? Is everything just negative? Most likely, that's how our minds go, especially when we're not able to assemble the way we want to. We're not connected the way we want to. That's why you have to make the effort to come to, to schedule yourself to, to make sure I'm here on Sunday morning to be attended to attend virtually uh, at, at, at the Genesis live stream on, on secgenesis.org, on, on the pages, on the YouTube. you got to get the word inside of you to feed your faith instead of your fear. As believers, we have two choices on how we can respond to external circumstances. We can be complainers or worshipers. Complainers or worshipers. Complainers can always find something to complain about. We know that to be true. You may not be able to say amen loud in your house because you're sitting by a whole bunch of complainers. I dare you to tag somebody that you know that complains all the time. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But we all have, have complainers in our lives. For them, the glass is always half empty. Nothing is right. There is nothing good. The sky is always falling. And we're all going to hell in a handbasket. Complainers. It got quiet in, 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 in the internet land. It got quiet. It got quiet because you might be the complainer. Where nothing is going right. Everything is going wrong. And you, and you say that you believe in God and still complain. Well, there's a, the other uh, choice that, that believers have is that of being a worshiper. For worshipers can always find something to praise God about. Why? Because they know that in everything, there is a blessing. Give thanks in every season, in everything. Uh, for we know that there's a reason to give thanks Give thanks in all things. They know that God's hand is in everything. And no matter what the circumstances are, God is working it out for our good. Oh, my God. I just said something out right there. It's because God is working it out for your good, even though it may not feel like it, even, even though it may not see, see, like, seem like it, God is still working things out Working it out behind the scenes of having people to come into your place and he's making things, making moves on your behalf. A worshiper understands this and makes the, watch this, pre-decision to look for something to praise God about, even in the most dire of circumstances. That means that even though I'm in a, even in the 23rd week of a pandemic, I still got to praise. I still got something to praise God about. 
I just turned 50. I'm clothed in my right mind, healthy, and I got a great family that loves me, a church that loves me. I'm, I got something to praise God for. Even in a pandemic, and let me tell you, God is not a respecter of person. You too still got something to praise God for. Oh, for you, for you, you may not be what you want to be, but thank God. You're not where you used to be. It could be worse. And can I tell you this? Can I tell you a secret? There's some things in your life that for pre-COVID wasn't all that great, but it got better during COVID. Amen all by myself. So let's go to our text real quickly. Let's go to our text. Acts 16, Paul and Silas, we know the story. Believers know the story. But just a short recap, Paul and Silas are in a prison cell in Philippi. Paul, they're in Silas, they're in prison because they got caught doing a good thing. They're making good trouble. Paul casts out a demon in a little girl who was being used for her, her gift to make money. Her master does not like what Paul has done uh, in, in delivering this little girl because, because she has taken, he has taken her gift away from, from, from being able to make them money. Can I just break it down so you can understand this little girl, a uh, uh, pimp, uh, 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 he, she, he was being, she was being pimped out for her gifts. And, and Paul delivered this girl out of that situation. And for this, and for this, we see Paul and Silas. Silas was just there. And said, I, but he was guilty by association. And, 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 and they caught, and they took them. The city rose up against them. This man must have been a man of power. The city rose up against them and threw them in prison. Yes, sir. And, and, and it just doesn't say that they threw them in prison. But this, but this it says here that, 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 that they were so mad, the multitude was so mad, they tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And the Bible says, and when they had many stripes laid upon them, then they threw them in prison. And so for doing a good thing, Paul and Silas get beaten, stripped and beaten, and then thrown into prison. And the Bible says, not just regular prison or not just jail, jail but the inner prison. They went to the hall. They went to the hole and they, and they fastened their, their hands and their feet in stocks. It seems, this seems kind of over, over, overdone. Uh, it's a large, it's a large response, an overreaction to what Paul has done. He has done a good thing. Huh? And I'm sure Paul and Silas are, are questioning their circumstance. I'm sure when they woke up this morning, that morning, they, 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 and, and, and said, hey, we're going to deliver this little girl that's coming across our path because it's not her first time coming. And, and, and he said, you know what, we can, we, can, we can help this woman. We can help this girl. And when they helped her, they thought they might have got some praise they, or, or some type of thank you. But no, they get beaten for doing good things. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a description of a bad day. A bad day. This is a description of a bad day. In fact, it just doesn't get too much more worse than this. But unfortunately, most people go through a lot less in their lives and still make the choice to complain about their life. Acts 16, 25 could have easily said around midnight, Paul and Silas were complaining about their circumstance. If, if you just substitute your name for theirs in the text, could you could it actually say that they, they that they were you were singing songs and hymns? 
praising God in jail? Can we just be truthful and shame the devil? If, if, if it was me, if it was Takoy Porter uh, in, in, in jail, uh, and it says around midnight, Takoy Porter was probably cussing somebody out about his circumstance. I, can I just be real and transparent with you? I, I don't deserve to be here. I don't know why. I just did something good. I tried to help this little girl and you're going to beat me and throw me in the inner prison? Lord, what's going on? Can we all be real and tell the truth and shame the devil that you've been there? You've been there? And you're saved, you're sanctified. You know how to shout ten shouts at the same time. You know ten tongues at the same time. You know all the church release, church release, and the dramatizations, and all of that blood-washed believers. But if we tell the truth, many of you could not say that you are caught praising, but caught complaining. Because it don't take much for us to complain. Because we are never satisfied and continue to take God for granted. But have you ever thought, where would you be without God? Where you would be without everyday blessings? Where you would be without clothes on your back, food on your table? Where would you be without activity of your limbs able to be to wake up with clothes in your right mind. Uh, have you ever d thought about, about the job that you complain about? Uh, um, that, that you actually have a job to complain about? My, 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 my baby girl would say that part right there, that part, that part. Uh, you complain about your friends and your family getting on your nerves, but you got friends and family that can get on your nerves. Where would you be? The Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas made a choice. Instead of complaining, they chose to refocus and worship. They chose to get their focus back and worship. For it says at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns unto God. And the prisoners were listening to them. It's tempting to get focused on the wrong things when everything is going wrong around you. Because you tend to zoom in on the problem and the trouble so that all you see is what's wrong. Uh, I'm not there yet. Hold on. Hold on. I got I to break this down a little bit more, Bishop. Thank you. But, 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 but all you tend to do is see what's wrong in front of you. You zoom in, and for the answer, the, the way that you zoom out, the, the way that you don't just focus on the trouble is that you got to find a way to get some perspective. How do I get perspective? How does a child of God get perspective? I'm glad you asked. For the way that you gain perspective over your trouble, in your circumstance, in your situation, is through, are you ready for it? Worship. Worship. For worshiping takes your eyes off of external circumstances and shifts your focus on God. It says, it says, Lord, you are first worthy. That's it. You're worthy. Oh, oh, oh I know you're looking for something deep. That's deep enough. He's worthy. Why? Why? Because, because he is God. He is the one, the creator of the universe. He is the one that sustains us. He's the one that, 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 that makes us and creates us. He is worthy of our worship. If, don't you know that if he just, if he just thought, thought, thought about giving you what you deserve, I, let me just say about you, giving me what I deserve, huh, that, 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 I, that I, I would have a reach 50 years old, but I thank God that, that he gives me his loving kindness, tender mercies, 
Uh, and because of that, uh, he deserves my worship. He deserves my worship in good times and in bad times. He deserves my worship when I got money in my pocket and when I'm broke as all to know what. He deserves my worship when I'm feeling good and when I'm feeling bad. He deserves my worship. Why? Because he is God. When you're worshiping God, you stop focusing on what's wrong with yourself and what's wrong with your circumstance. And you start to focus on with what's right, on what's right with God, what's right with the Lord. Paul and Silas could have easily zoomed in and complained about their circumstances. God, we cast out a demon, and this is what we got? We're on the missionary journey, and we got beaten and thrown in jail? And instead of you watching our backs, our backs are bleeding from a beating. They could have complained till the cows came home, but they made a choice to worship. Who am I speaking to in this place? Because, because some of you, you have, you have failed victim, failed prey to fear, and got caught up complaining. Caught up, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about what's going wrong in the world, and so much, so much is going wrong. But let me tell you what's right, what's right, what's right is that you got God on your side. What's right is that God is covering you. What's right is that God is keeping you from danger seen and you're and unseen. Here's what worship does. It restores your spiritual equilibrium. When I'm off kilter, when things are just not, when I'm 5150, and, and, and the threat of me, of just, of just, of just, just giving it all into fear. When I start to worship, it picks me up. It evens me out. Uh, it, it, it brings me back, brings my life back into focus. It helps me to regain the perspective. And it allows me to see my blessings that are in front of me. Uh, worshiping allows me to zoom out and refocus on the big picture. Knowing that better is a process and that God is working through me. And if God woke me up this morning and if he put, started me on my way, if he allowed me to, to, to see another day, that he's given me another chance. He's given me another opportunity uh, to, to, to do something big and great in my, my life. Uh, somebody say, I need to refocus. I need to refocus. And some of you, because you haven't been in church for so long, you say, I see you, but I haven't been in church. And I don't feel it. I dare you to start focusing on God. Focus in your living room on the goodness of God. Focus in the kitchen on the blessings of God. Focus wherever you are about how good God has been. Even throughout this 23 weeks, uh, when everything is going crazy, death all around you, for some reason, he sustained you. He kept you. He's blessed you in the midst of it all. God has blessed you. You got to make a decision. Is it easy? Nope, it's not easy. Huh, but you got to decide to praise him. No matter what I see, I'm going to decide to praise him. No matter how I feel, I'm going to decide to praise him. Uh, no matter what, what's going on in my life, I decide to praise him. Uh, because complaining lifts up the problem, but praise lifts up God. I'm going to say it again. Complaining lifts up the problem, but praise lifts up God. And the Bible says, God says, if I be lifted up above the earth... I will draw all men unto me. I'm not there just yet. Hold my mule. Like, hold on, hold on. But well, worship allows me to reframe my circumstance and rise above my trouble. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm getting happy over this thing right here because I've encountered so much trouble in my 50 years that the only thing that saved me, Bishop, was a worship on the inside. And sometimes you can't wait till Sunday morning to worship. You got to worship him on a Monday afternoon all by yourself. 
when you don't have your mama or your daddy there, when my wife can't bring me back, or when my children are not around, I got to go into my secret place with the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for you supplying my needs. I thank you for keeping my strength. I thank you for the ability to pray. I thank you for the ability to praise and lift you up. I thank you for saving my life over and 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 over over again. Lord, I thank you for keeping my mind. Lord, when I lost my mind, when I lost my mind, when I was legitimately 5150, Lord, you kept me. Hey, you kept me. You kept my mind. You kept me peace. Peace in the midst of a storm. Peace in the midst of hurt. Peace in the midst of pain. Peace in the midst of people talking about me. Lord, you kept me. You stayed me. You kept my mind. You kept me from hurting myself. You kept me so I can live on. You gave me strength to live. Strength to get up. Strength to fight. Strength to believe. Strength to love. Strength to forgive. Lord, I thank you. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Uh, uh, Because people are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in the world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want. And if they can't find them, they make them. What are you saying? Worship allows you to create your circumstance. So the Bible, so, 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 so when it looks like, it looks like it's bad. But let me tell you something right now. When I praise God, he allows me to see what I couldn't see. He allows me to perceive what others can't perceive. And he allows me to see his hand moving in that trouble. Oh, good God Almighty. I came to tell, today to tell you that God's hand is moving uh, in your trouble. God's hand is moving in your circumstance. And if you just allow him to move, if you allow his hands to work in your situation, one thing that you will find that he's turning that circumstance around and he's shaping it, he's molding it for your good. Is there anybody here that's thankful that God's hand is on your life? That God's hand is in your circumstances. That God's hand is on you. If you're thankful, I need you to stay on the screen. I'm grateful for God's hand on my life. I'm grateful for God's hand in my circumstances. I'm thankful that God's hand is moving right now. Moving and working, shaping and molding blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings and blessings for me. Well, as we know, the all things are working out for the good of them who love the Lord. Can I get a witness out there that God's working things out for your good on your behalf? And he's turning things uh, around. Uh, I got one more thing. I got to tell you. And that, this is it. While Paul and Silas uh, were in jail, their bodies were changed. Chained. But their spirit was free. I need to say it again. Their bodies were changed. Were in chains. Stocks on their feet. Uh, their hands were bound. But the spirits were lifted. The spirits were, were, were soaring. The spirits were free. And here's the thing that you have to understand. That in order to get your focus back, that you can't focus on what's bound. But you got to focus on what's free. And let me tell you, 
that if you got a voice, you need to focus on using your voice and give a loud shout. Shout with a great shout. You got to focus on your hands. If your hands are free, you are to clap your hands in your house. Clap your hands in your dining room. Clap your hands. And if your feet are not bound, you need to go ahead and put them up and put them down. Pick them up and put it down. Pick them up and put it down. And start giving God a praise. Start saying thank you. Start giving him glory. Start saying, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to worship God. Worship you over by circumstance. And the Bible says, when they pray, when they praise, and when they give thanks unto God, suddenly, out of nowhere, God stepped in. And the, the foundations began to shake. And things that to move in their favor. They saw the hand of God move in their favor. And the doors that were shut were now open. All the locks came out. And things, and they were free. And their bodies start to match their praise. I looked at my hands and they looked new. I looked at my feet and they did too. No longer bound, no longer bruised, no longer messed up. I'm free. Free to praise him. I'm free. Free to love him. I'm free. Free to give that praise. And I praise my way out of my circumstance. I praise my way out of my trouble. I praise my way out of my pain. I praise my way. I'm here to tell you that you can praise your way out of a pandemic. You can praise your way out of quarantine. You can praise your way uh, out of your situation. God, God has equipped you with your praise. You are equipped with your perception. All you need to do is get your focus back and focus on God. Focus on God and let him see that you have something to live for. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what the Lord has in store for us. I'm so glad that God has blessed us that even in the pandemic, I'm so glad that God's kept you in the pandemic. I got a reason. I got a reason. I got a reason to praise God. I got a reason to lift him up. And when I praise, my chains become loose. When I praise, doors are opening. And when I praise, everybody around me is blessed. Is there anybody that's ready to praise him? Is there anybody that give God a praise in your household, in your good car? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. got a reason to praise him. You are to praise him. You are to give God a shout, a great shout. Bless his high holy name. Hey! Give God a praise. Right where you at, give him a holler. Refocus. Make God big in your life. Get your focus back. And praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Whatever you do, you ought to praise him. Wherever you at, you ought to praise him. Give God a praise. Hey. Give God a praise. Hey, hey. You are the praise. 
praise him. You ought to praise him. Lift him up. Get a shout. Lift him up. Raise your hand. Lift him up. And give God what he deserves. Hey. Give him what he deserves. Give him your praise. Just put a worship on right now. Let's just praise the Lord. Give him 30 seconds of your best praise in this place. It's time to refocus. It's time to move forward. Because we are more than conquerors because of Jesus Christ. T gave us. So we just want you to be encouraged to refocus and change your perspective. Amen. And as you're focusing in on God, focus in on finding a church to belong to. Amen. We thank you for joining us today. And you can meet us at sacgenesis.org to just continue on our worship with us. Remember to share and invite someone you know to next week's service, which starts at 1030 a.m. Go to our website and complete the connection card and stay connected with our Genesis Church via the e-campus. Amen. We just bless Amen. you today, God. Amen. And Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for a place of worship. We want to thank you for allowing us to pray, worship, and praise you, Lord, online. Father God, thank you for the sermon today, Heavenly Father, to get our focus back, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that we can worship you and change the situation, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, that in our homes, huh, when we're not here, Father God, but you are with us, Lord, we thank you for your special presence, Lord. Now, Father God, pour back into Pastor T and help him to continue to fulfill his purpose. And Father God, I thank you for blessing us and blessing the words of our mouth, Lord, and the meditations of our heart to be acceptable unto you. Now, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you will cause your face to shine upon us and give us peace. In Jesus' name, we thank you for a productive week. Amen.